Hi peaches, it's Shava. Welcome back to my channel and thank you for clicking on another video. I still have cold. I'm sorry for sounding like the Selma sisters. Patty and Selma. What is their name? The sisters from The Simpsons whose names are Belvedere? Belvoir. You know who I'm talking about. I'm sorry that I sound like Patty and Selma, but that is not going to deter us today from exploring the subreddit. Just know, mother-in-laws. Just know. I can never say the title any other way. It's just know, mother-in-laws. Just know. I absolutely adore seeing you lovely peaches recommend me areas to explore online down in the comment section. Just no mother- Just no mother-in-law was one of them. We took a little deep dive into it once. I'm very grateful to say that I don't have a mother-in-law like this. I can't imagine myself writing. <laughs> On a forum like this, for those of you who don't know, it's a forum that exists where people ask for advice and sometimes just rant and get a bit of respite from the bananas mother-in-law antics that seem to exist in their lives. I really hope I never have to <laughs> use this forum, but it's just a bit of fun to take a look at, isn't it? I'm also hoping that it's gonna be a sort of medication, if that makes sense, like a preventative medication. If I see what other people are doing and being complained about, hopefully when I'm a mother-in-law, I can make sure that I don't do these things so that my my future kids and kids' partners don't write about me <laughs> on places like this. I do wonder, like, no, nobody ever sets out to be a just no mother-in-law, right? Nobody wakes up one day and goes, hmm, yes, I've decided that today I'm going to torment my child and their growing family. I'm going to be really, really weird for no reason. <laughs> like, I wonder where in that line of witnessing your kids getting married and, you know, like, having a really supportive, lovely bubble to being written about on something like this, I, I wonder how that happens. Anyway, that's not for today. Let's take a look <laughs> at some people who have already reached that station. I don't know, maybe we can help a couple people out. Maybe we can just laugh about it. Let's see. Mother-in-law is mad that my infant son is wearing girl clothes. Oh Lord. I feel like this is not as unhinged as the stories that we normally see here. If what we're reading is just the truth of the matter. My son's seven months old. Back when I was pregnant, my fiance and I decided not to find out the sex until our baby was born. That's sweet. I wonder if I would want to. I feel like I'd be really curious but ultimately it doesn't change anything. So Jamie does a series on his channel where he looks at gender reveals and I've joined him for a couple of them and they're really interesting. <laughs> like I've always said after seeing those that we should do a gender reveal party and just be like, it's a baby. <laughs> because ultimately it doesn't matter. And it's also just a good excuse to have a lot of people around, right? Also the concept of a gender reveal, like why it started was actually really sweet. There was an expecting mother who was pregnant and she'd lost her baby before and you can only tell the gender of the baby, the gender, the sex, the assigned sex at three months in, but she'd never managed to reach that stage. And so she did and she came up with the idea of a gender reveal party as a way to celebrate her being able to get to that milestone, which is really sweet. And it's so sad that it's been turned into what it has now, which is people being out outrageously stupid and extravagant and uh, just reinforcing gender stereotypes that really don't need to be reinforced. This was a very large digression. Would you have a gender reveal? Let me know down in the comments below. My cousin isn't big on gender specific clothing. She lives in jeans and Star Wars t-shirts since she was 20. So most of the baby clothes that she gave me were completely gender neutral. There were a couple of pink onesies, but that doesn't bother me at all. They were plain and none of them had any of those mummy little princess prints on them. Literally the only specifically girly thing about them were the little bows that they put on the collar sometimes. God, I love baby's clothes. It's so cute. We were at the airport recently and I saw this kid and they were wearing this top. Oh my God, it was the sweetest thing. It had like dinosaurs on different rolly things. <laughs> like there was a dinosaur on a skateboard and a dinosaur on a scooter and the T-Rex was wearing roller skates because it couldn't be on a scooter because its arms were too little. I wanted the t-shirt. I wanted it. It was so cute. But it just makes me feel so broody. Not necessarily for having a child right now because then I think about like the early starts and the constant pooping and the sense of sheer dread and fear of looking after another little squish that is so dependent on you. But the idea of the wardrobe, like the baby wardrobe that you could create, like that's really cute, right? I know, I need to work on my priorities. I keep digressing. Let's read on. We had lunch at mother-in-law's place on Friday. It was me, my fiance, my brother-in-law and my son clad in a pale pink onesie and baby jeans. <laughs> baby jeans? Do you cuff the little baby jeans? And you put on the little baby vans? I should probably mention that my mother-in-law is a devout Catholic, which neither me nor my fiance are. We had a feeling that she was gonna complain about the pink onesie, so my fiance added a clip-on bow tie <laughs> and suspenders. I joked that our baby looked like a 2011 Ken doll. That is so funny that you were like, oh God, we need to mask up this outfit. Let's make him look like Ken. <laughs> the visit goes well for the first hour or so. We're in the middle of talking about brother-in-law's new job at Code Brown. We have Code Brown. Oh dear. I take off my son's suspenders to change his diaper and then he won't let me put them back on. So when we get back to the table, 
mother-in-law finally realizes that, hey, her grandson's wearing a pink onesie. Oh my God. Just the idea that a little clip on bow tie and suspenders is enough to stop the bigotry. Why didn't we think about this earlier? Trans men, anybody who's experienced the unsufferable stupidity of a transphobe, you wanna get rid of that? You can fool them with just a pair of suspenders and a clip on bow tie. Yours for only $9.99, terms and conditions apply. She's obviously confused, but she doesn't comment on it. Later on, I'm breastfeeding him and the bow tie comes off. And when I'm done, mother-in-law sees the bow on his collar and realizes that, hey, her grandson's wearing a girl onesie. A don 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 This time she immediately points it out and I tell her that it's a hand-me-down from my niece. But, but it's pink. Yeah, what about it? Pink is a girl's color. It's actually not. Just put it out there. For those of you who might not know, pink used to be a colour for boys and blue was the colour for girls. Something to do with like pink looking like the stain of blood and like that being good for boys in battle. Also, I don't hate people who are Catholics. My point is live and let live. This is my mantra. You believe in a religion? Okay, you believe in a religion. However, I find it hypocritical that devout Catholic mother-in-law here, who likely goes to church, right, sits in a church and watches a priest who like they wear white dresses. The men wear white dresses all the time. Or there are like altar boys who are also in dresses and they watch these little kids get baptized. And when kids are baptized, boy or girl, I was gonna say or non-binary, I'm not sure if, no, no, I, I definitely think there are some churches that accept trans people. So yeah, or non-binary, whatever gender you are, these little baby squishes are wearing the frilliest white dresses I've ever seen. And yet you come home and you're like, oh, pink. Pink is a girl's colour. Those are girls' clothes. Why are you making him wear girls' clothes? Mom, he's a baby. He doesn't care if they're girls' clothes. This goes on for a good five minutes, during which mother-in-law stands by her notion that my seven-month-old son, who can barely tell the difference between food and his own feet, will get confused if we keep letting him wear pink. The discussion is eventually interrupted by the arrival of my brother-in-law's girlfriend, and it's not brought up again, though I do catch mother-in-law frantically trying to put the bow tie back on a while later. This is brilliant. That night, mother-in-law sends me links to articles about gender confusion in infants. No. Followed by her priest friend's phone number. <laughs> so the priest can let the baby know, can hook the baby up with the cool white dresses, rain, and an honestly good-looking penny for her name's recipe. Mother-in-law's sitting there like, how do I craft this? So I make it sound like I'm not having a go. Oh yeah, here you go, some bolognese. This just feels like you're living a BBC comedy family sitcom. I would watch it. Oh, well, you know what? As far as unhinged mother-in-lawness goes, I don't think this is too bad. It's harmless. It seems harmless and more funny to be fair. Having said that, we shouldn't underestimate the negativity that can come from such closed-minded and labeling of people and clothing. They can make for really hostile environments when it's not just a little baby in a onesie, but a person trying to express themselves in a way that they should and are absolutely entitled to express themselves, especially when it then relates to identity that may be non-conforming, you know? I'm having a laugh, but I'm not trivializing that this stuff can be really harmful. There you go. Did you know that pink was actually considered a boy's color years ago and blue was for girls? The reason being that pink was a dilute of red and represented blood. It was for boys to wear because it showed they'd be good in battle, but blue was seen as a fresh and calm color of the sky. And that's what girls would be, fresh and calm. They clearly didn't know me as a child. <laughs> Funny that she's talking about gender confusion in clothing since Catholics put boys in long white dresses to get baptized. Altar boys and priests also wear long white dresses. Exactly who was confused here. It's just, it's so funny. It's so funny to me. Like the Romans in particular were so them. <laughs> the togas and the Greek gods, you know, the stuff that we see as like the prime of masculinity and beauty. And it's just so different to the people who sit there now with a beer in one hand, a football in the other, their butt crack showing because their shorts are too low and they're wearing flip flops and it's six degrees out outside. I just, I just, I, I can't help but laugh. Because if you don't laugh, you cry. Let's <laughs> see what else our mother-in-laws have in store today. Oh, does anybody ever feel like they're in the plot of Get Out? I really hope not. Because if you're going to your partner's house and they are auctioning <laughs> with your body and they're swelling around cups of tea and you feel like you're sinking through a sofa, that is, that is not okay. Jordan Peele is amazing at making horror. We keep it on the screen, please. <laughs> we don't want this in person. Not in real life. Okay, so I had an interracial marriage, says OP. I did 
didn't meet my ex's family until we were about to get married. Before this point, I thought we were quite happy living together. I didn't feel like they looked down on me or was racist in any way. When I met them, they didn't display any blatant racism either. We went through with the wedding and then I noticed something different. Gradually, whenever ex and I had an argument, ex and his mum would have quiet conversations about me. They'd switch to speaking to their native language in front of me to talk about me. Ooh. He'd become nastier and nastier towards me, even though his mum never displayed any aggression. When I first met them, they added me to a family group chat and then later on I noticed that my husband was added to a new chat that suspiciously didn't have me on it. They organised trips that were meant to exclude me. I was pretty upset one time when my ex asked to go on a family trip whilst leaving me at home. I suddenly felt like he and his mum were in a coalition against me and I felt like they thought they were better than me because of their background. Recently, as I was going through the divorce process, my ex said that they all told him not to marry me. It's honestly quite traumatising. I can hardly understand why they bothered to go through the marriage just to destroy it in the span of a year. Oh, that's really sad. Oh, we went from like funny family sitcom bow tie falling off a little pink onesie to this. I was gonna say I couldn't imagine feeling the racism from a partner's family and I'm very lucky to say I have never, not once felt that way from my husband's, husband's, we're married now, oh. from my husband's family. But if I'm being really honest, I've certainly seen it the other way around. We're in 2023 and I live in a predominantly white society here in the UK and I'm not saying that racism doesn't exist. Absolutely, it still exists. And it definitely permeates my life um, in quite considerable ways, which I'd really rather it didn't. But I think in family settings, right, like with partners, it is very frowned upon. I think it's more common than not that you would find people being really offended and calling out racist behavior if they were like, no, sorry, your partner is a person of color and we're not accepting them into our family. Like you don't see that a lot or when you do, it is called out. Like it's very common for it to be called out, but it doesn't seem to work the same way the other way around. When a person of colour goes out with a white person, it's still really common from my experience and from what I've seen of the world, even in 2023, for the person of colour's family to be like, no, we don't marry white people. We don't accept white people in our family. It's not okay. And for some reason, that's not seen as being like bigoted or discriminatory because it's seen as like a preservation of culture and oh, they just don't understand our values. And I'm not at all saying like, oh, white people need a violin, but it does really boil my blood. And I, I experience that some of the sort of stricter parts of my family who I don't speak to were really upset at the concept of family members marrying white or dating white and it's it's just the weirdest thing to me that the color of someone's skin would make you not buff. I'm trying to justify racism that's why it's not making sense oh it's interesting though I, I bring this up because I'm a little confused reading this I'm assuming that the person who wrote this post is a person of color but they don't actually state it they say it's an interracial relationship they say the ex the husband was told not to marry and you would assume that's from the racial majority especially if you're saying that you feel like you're in the plot of get out i think the native language point um threw me but this um this definitely sucks i'm sorry that you feel that way it's also so nasty to hear that your relationship broke down this may sound weird but i hope that you were incompatible in other ways and it wasn't just about the family because otherwise my blood would absolutely boil to know that a family's influence alone would cause such a horrible breakdown of a relationship so soon in there's a reason that you married right i've seen it happen in my family networks, people of different cultures coming together and facing a lot of negativity for it. And then also having conversations with me and in some instances almost like being hired to be like, oh, like to discourage me from having a relationship that was different. They're like being used as examples of what not to do and how bad it can go. And I just, I just think we need to move past this. You know, like the only people that should be concerned about those sort of things in a relationship are the two people who are in it. <laughs> if you're not in it, you should have no say on it. The one thing I will say though is I'm very glad that this isn't really like the plot of Get Out in the sense that there was no silent auctioning, you were not fearing for your life, rape for a movie. At one point doesn't the maid ask the protagonist to go into an oven? Or am I thinking about a different horror movie? My point being whilst I'm very sad that this has happened to you and you're feeling racism in such a substantial way, I'm very glad that it didn't go into the realms of how bananas that movie is. Should we dive a bit deeper? My mother-in-law keeps accidentally referring to herself as mummy and to me as grandma. Oh, she's been doing it randomly since my son was born and he's 19 months now. It pisses me off every time because in my mind, there's absolutely no way that mistake can be made. It's giving she wants my baby. It's totally giving she wants your baby, babe. That's not okay. Also, she said on multiple occasions, things like, oh, you parent way different than I do. And the last time she said it, I almost had it out with her because I commented back and said, and that's a good thing. My husband doesn't have the greatest relationship with her. He just kind of puts up with her. They're always disagreeing and she still tries to tell him how to do things. And he's 35 years old. She's extremely overbearing 
something and he goes to therapy for it because he's an only child and he feels bad about the idea of cutting her off. I'm just checking in to make sure that I'm not overacting because of how I already feel about her. Has this happened to other people? Was it to the child as well? To be like, I'm mummy and that's your grandma? I don't know what I do. And if it's happening with you in the room, imagine what she's doing when she's like babysitting that child and you're not there. That's what really worries me. That is just not okay. Like maybe she's trying to vicariously relive motherhood and like erase you from the picture. It just doesn't sound healthy to me in any way. I would generally feel a need to see if this was accidental or not. Because if it's not, I mean, it totally sounds like it is, right? You, more than anyone, OP will have a vibe for it, <laughs> will understand, but you could totally play it off as if you're really concerned, like, hmm, are you okay there? Because if you think you're a mum, maybe we need to get you tested. And then maybe she'll stop, because that is so not okay. Grandma is confused. I'm mummy and she's grandma. Grandma, do you need a nap or a timeout? You said that backwards. Grandma, you're obviously struggling with your role. Go home and take a nap and we can try again when you're less confused. I approve. I approve. I would be using these rinse and repeat again and again. Your mother-in-law is way out of line. I'd be very direct at this point and just tell her that if she's not mentally sound enough to remember who's grandma and who's mummy, she can't be around your son. <sighs> Ooh. It's just weird. It's weird the things that people put up with because somebody has a label mum. I know the husband's not putting up with it. He's going to therapy and he's clearly struggling with it. If this is anyone else, we would not put up with that behavior. But because it's mum, mm. because it's dad, because it's partner, mm. you get that blind loyalty and you stick it in the bin. That's where it belongs. Someone's giving you shit no matter who they are, you call them out on it. That's true love. That is real love. I mean that. Oh, is this a father-in-law? Father-in-law gives me creep vibe and mother-in-law doesn't doesn't care much about his behavior. Should I let them in? It sounds like they're a vampire. I'm watching Buffy at the moment and so like for the first time. It's a great show by the way, great show. Don't know why I wasn't into it sooner. We have to like invite vampires in. <laughs> I can just imagine them being at the door, like this creepy father-in-law would be like, mm. I'm a 29 year old woman. I don't have parents and my husband is 32. We have an almost one year old daughter. My mother-in-law initially seemed like a sweet lady. However, when I was pregnant, she didn't phone at all to ask about my health. Additionally, during postpartum, she visited and stayed only two days, although promising that she would give me postpartum care for three months. Okay. I mean, sounds like she's not being overbearing and intrusive, which is what most mother-in-laws are on this forum. I was deeply hurt back then because of her actions. In short, my husband and I were raising our daughter by ourselves so far, with no family help. I'll be back to the workforce within a year and we need childcare that's reliable. I think around that time, my sister-in-law, my husband's sister, might also be flying the nest. So my mother-in-law and my father-in-law are being extra sweet to us because they want to move in with us next year. Oh, that was a plot twist I didn't expect. My mother-in-law will look after our daughter and do some chores and I've got no problem with that. However, my father-in-law gives me a major creep vibe. He used to have so many affairs in the past when married to my mother-in-law. When I asked my mother-in-law, why are you staying with him? She replied, well, what can I do? I guess she stayed because she doesn't work and she relies on his income to raise their children. Whenever my husband and I visit the house once a month, my father-in-law looks at me up and down. Plus he starts having conversations with me, trying to make lame jokes despite me ignoring him multiple times. One time whilst visiting, I wore a beautiful lavender dress and my father-in-law gave such a stare with a smiling face and I immediately went and changed. No, 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 no. Good signs to look out for. This is making me feel uncomfortable to even talk about. I'm not sure if I want to continue, but I feel like this is important to raise this point. If you are feeling some kind of way, there is a reason that you're feeling some kind of way. And in these family situations, you should be able to feel like you are in a safe enough place to ask for help, to express a need for support. And if when you are asking asking for said support or calling out this bad behavior, what you're being told is, well, what can I do? It's just how he is. Biggest red flag, you never have to settle with it. You never have to put up with it. If someone is making you feel uncomfortable, imagine how many other people he is inflicting that discomfort upon. And not just other people, like you're a mama now. You have a kid, that kid is so young, that kid will not be able to express it in the way that you can. I'm not trying to say if you don't do it yourself, do it for others, do it for you. Call out that <laughs> smother him in ketchup and stick him on a pole, because that is the biggest red flag if ever I saw one. Nowadays, I don't even look at him in the eyes because of his creepy vibe and he like you guys are contemplating him living with you? No. I usually look at my phone and mostly answer one word if he asks me something. At the same time, my mother-in-law knows about his character, but still is extra worried that he will take care of her husband once she's gone, meaning when she dies. That's the main reason that she wants to move in with us. Both my mother-in-law who's 58 and my father-in-law who's 62 are in good health and I don't believe that they'll pass away anytime soon. If we do let them in, we need to look after them for the next 20 to 30 years. So far, our visit to the house is mostly one to two days. My husband's on the fence to let them in after seeing the neglect of our well-being during my postpartum period. I don't feel good about letting my father-in-law in the house. Should I trust my intuition or am I thinking this too much? I want to grab you OP by the shoulders and shake you and say, do not, do not let them live with you. The fact that this is even a conversation is not 
okay. Even away from the creepiness, right? Like creepiness aside, you only see them for one to two days. They haven't looked after you or your kids in the way that you clearly expressed and wanted initially, right? They've not proved themselves to be reliable. What makes you think that this is a good idea? This is a terrible idea. I'm not in this family and I know this is a terrible idea. Don't do it. Oh my Lord. I feel like I want an update on this one. Girl, no. They are not moving in with you, says <laughs> someone. Trust your instincts. Always trust your gut. You know what? I really do believe that. There is a reason. These little tummies, they talk to us. They know things. They know things. We should listen to them. Oh my lordy, that made me feel all kinds of ways. And look, I know this is an Amma the Arsehole. I know you're probably not here for advice. We're here to like explore and have fun, but like mum hat on. Please, if you are experiencing anything similar to this, don't be afraid to reach out. Don't be afraid to share with a loved one how you are feeling and ask for help and support because no one should be made to feel that uncomfortable. As I said, if they're doing it to you, imagine who else they're doing it to. Ooh, is it wrong to have my husband pick between my mother-in-law or me? Yes, is the answer to that. I mean, let's read on, but yes, because this seems like a really unhealthy ultimatum. Don't get someone else to pick. You decide for your actions. Let other people decide with their actions. This is why I don't like ultimatums. I've been with my husband for 10 years now and time after time, he continues to always defend my mother-in-law over me. I've had enough. Is it wrong to have my husband pick me or her? I'm so tired of the crap she puts me through. I've been struggling lately after having our fifth baby. Fifth baby, woo! And I really needed some support from my husband. He went to his mum to vent about me and she just keeps getting into his mind about how I need to be miserable, get over my myself and he has five other kids to love and I'm not important. I mean, this sounds so messed up. Why are you even giving him the choice? Like, why is that even a contemplation in your mind? <laughs> if you're this unhappy, you are this unhappy, you leave. Don't leave your power. Don't leave your self-respect and your fate of how you're going to continue in someone else's hands. Don't give them the opportunity to pick someone else. You know you deserve better unless it's the mother-in-law that's only doing this and your husband's like super normal and wonderful without that influence. In which case, your husband needs to, I was gonna say man up, that's a terrible phrase. Your husband needs to grow up and stand up against his mum and respect his family. Ugh. She has told him over and over that I bring nothing to the table. I'm a stay at home mum who solely takes care of the kids in everything they do. I mean, you have five kids. That's a very big full time job in itself. She's told him multiple times that his money is his money and I just waste it. My parents purchased our house and we don't pay rent or bills. They did this to help us out so that we could provide a good life for our kids. He's the only one who works, so shouldn't he be providing for our family and extracurricular stuff? This sounds so messy, but she's making him send her money to have a savings because all I do is spend on things like groceries and the kids' activities. I don't do anything for myself at all. I haven't cut my hair in years. I don't even wear makeup anymore because I can't buy it without getting shamed. Meanwhile, my husband has traveled multiple times for fun to see my mother-in-law and his family, gone to multiple concerts and movies. And every time I ask for some time for me, he tells his mum and has his mum tell me how selfish I am. My husband entirely believes everything that she says about me. Sounds like he's not just believing. Sounds like he's instigating. If he goes and runs to mummy and then mummy comes and tells you that you're being selfish so he doesn't have to have a conversation and then is going off to, no, no. In my opinion, from what I'm reading here, this man has no leg to stand on and is not worth fighting for. Why are you giving him a choice? Respect yourself walk away. I didn't even get anything done for my birthday because his mum was doing a photo shoot for her birthday and he was paying for it and her birthday was months away. I just gave birth three weeks ago and I'm severely struggling. I need help from him emotionally and to just feel like he's there for me. Is it wrong if I finally tell him that I need him to pick me or his mum? I can't keep living like this. I honestly think that at this point my life, as dramatically as it sounds, depends on it. I'm not in a good place and I need to be able to get help without his mum telling him that I'm attention seeking, mental health isn't real, or that I'm weak. You need to run, babe. You need to run because this mother-in-law is not helping you, but nor is your husband. And there's only so much blame that you can put on somebody who's making another autonomous human being feel and act a certain way. I've seen it, I felt it, I've done it myself. I've been annoyed at one person for influencing this other person that I love. But the point is this person that you love is also not there for you. They're also not treating you the way that you deserve to be treated. And there's only so much that you can blame someone else for that person's actions. They are both complicit in this and you deserve so much better and you are in a precarious position right now not just in terms of your mental health but you just gave birth three weeks ago to your fifth child you have a lot of support on this forum which is great to see but i really hope you are able to reach out to other loved ones to friends to other family members because this is not okay god yeah mother-in-laws can be really really unhinged loves peach watching this video if you can relate to this in any way i hope you're getting the support and help that you need you should not be giving him an ultimatum you should just be caring for yourself don't worry about him don't worry about his feelings or what he does put yourself first i think you already did pick so some else. You should either get counselling or leave. Someone else says, wait, so your parents bought your house, you take care of 
five kids and you bring nothing to the table? You've just been disrespected. Sounds like he's already chosen to someone. You deserve better. You need to quit blaming her and blame him instead. They're both to blame, it sounds. And I think you need to pick yourself. Do not give him an ultimatum to someone else. He'll either pick his mum or pick you, but hold it over your head and guilt you every chance that he's got. Whatever the outcome, you will not be happy. That's why ultimatums to me never work because someone will always resent you for taking their autonomy away from them. You need to remove yourself from that situation. And honestly, like I feel so bad that your self-esteem has been ripped down to the amount that it has because somebody in that position doesn't deserve to feel as useless as mother-in-law and husband is making them feel. This is the biggest just no mother-in-law and just no husband that I think I've seen like on this form. I know this is only the second time we're doing this, but my God, this is not okay. It's the manipulation that you have contributed nothing when the reality is, forget about the fact that your parents bought the house. The fact that you have five kids and that you're a stay at home mum, that is the only reason that your husband is able to go out and work and go and do fun things like going to the movies and going on these holidays. You think you'd be able to do that if it wasn't for you looking after five children and being called selfish by a mother-in-law like to the point where you can then not even cut your hair which is like a basic necessity it's not even like necessarily a beauty thing it's a requirement for me to not get big headaches because my hair gets too long and heavy there doesn't seem to be enough respect in this relationship but there, most importantly doesn't seem to be enough respect for you to yourself. I'm so glad to see that on the forum there are so many people here offering support helplines, encouraging OP to speak to someone about this and to most importantly safeguard their mental health. If you're in a similar position, my love, take this as a sign that you need to do the same. It's not weak to reach out to other people. It's not weak to ask for help. And wow, we are mother-in-laws totally bananas. Ooh. I think that was a very heavy one. We should probably end it there for today. Thank you for taking a look at the forum with me. How are you, lovely Peach? How's your relationship with your mother-in-law if you have one? I'd love to know. Let me know downstairs if this is a norm or if the people on this forum are just the really unlucky ones. And I'm really hoping it is the latter because people have no right to be this bananas. That is not okay. All right, my loves, if you enjoy this kind of content, please feel free to subscribe. I will hope to see you in another video where I'm not so coldy. I apologize again for my voice. I'll see you next time with another video. Be kind and have a great day.